share these thoughts about uh, really tough topics, which I do not avoid, as you well know. Uh, in the midst of uh, so many raging currents, worrisome pandemic surges in so many states now as well that spike in Israel as well, gun violence in major cities, including our own, murders out of nowhere, people enjoying a barbecue in Lynn, shot at some fatally from a passing car, totally, totally random. Principled protests, as we've discussed for many weeks, but also pernicious people abusing those very principles. Searing racial and political divides, taking one side or another rather than affirming let's take care of each other, fury and defiance over masks and social distancing, now becoming political footballs as is science itself, much to our chagrin. Schools, how, when, and if they should reopen. U.S. visas, threats against foreign students if they're not literally in class. I almost feel that beyond raging currents, we are being assaulted by riptides of uncertainty and of fear. Where are we headed? Where are we going? Where is the light that globally, that light is the reasonable expectation of every human being of goodwill if we could only abide by the oft-repeated truism, united we stand, but divided we fall. And so I take the liberty of sharing a few thoughts. Simply stated, every one of our biblical heroes including the namesake of our Torah portion, Pinchas, grandson, as I said, of the high priest Aaron, as well as Moses, as well as our patriarchs and matriarchs. Each is flawed, imperfect, often struggling to escape from their own riptides, riptides pulling them away from faith and towards despair and worse, anger, impatience, mm -hmm even a kind of rebellion. And yet, somehow, they emerge with all of their shortcomings, which the Bible never hides, as inspiring to us, their descendants, perhaps not in spite of, but because of their faults, so believably human. Without going into detail, but there is no time for it, I want our guest speaker to have the time. Pinchas, in an act of savage retribution to overcome the Midianite seduction of the Israelites into orgies and pagan worship, nonetheless emerges as the zealot for critical causes. Though the sages were enormously distressed by his violent act. Perhaps Golda Meir thought of him in her famous remark, which I quote and I've never forgotten it. She said, When peace comes, we will perhaps be able to deal with the idea of the Arabs killing our sons and daughters. But it will be even harder to deal with or to forgive them for having forced us to kill their sons and daughters. This is a reference to the zealotry of Pinchas, which Israel, in order to survive, sometimes with very humanistic principles guiding them, has at to emulate, has had to emulate in order to be Israel. Friends, even when it comes to slavery, our Bible is far from perfect. Despite all our discussions today, there is slavery in the biblical record, not the kind of miserable abuse of human beings that we think of today and for hundreds of years, but nonetheless, there is slavery and it took a while to eradicate that from the record of Jewish history. And so I thought of all of this when I ask myself, and I ask you this question, to what extent do we judge figures from the past without any sense at all of the times in which they live? Like some of you, I've been listening to the live streaming of Hamilton in Disney Plus, and some of us also might have seen the show, and struck by the line in the show, which literally quoted says, the world turns upside down. And I say, does it not in July of 2020 turn upside down? 
Hamilton has become a part of American culture. And one of the moments that received a great cheer from the audience, live audience, it was filmed in 2016, was when Hamilton said, immigrants, we get the job done. Now let me sell it to you. This was a reference to a major ethical issue today, but an anachronism. That his times were different. And Hamilton never said that. And there is, as you might have heard, and this is why I mention all of this, a move afoot to protest Disney's streaming of the show. The claim is that it celebrates people who are racist, such as Hamilton's marriage to one of Schuyler's sisters, a family involved in the slave trade. Hamilton himself never owned a slave, as far as we know. But Jefferson, another major figure in the musical, certainly did. And when asked about these inequities, Lynn manuel Miranda, the author, the composer, great actor of Hamilton himself, tweeted, and I quote him, this is a flawed musical about flawed human beings. As is our biblical text as well about flawed heroes who despite their flaws continue to inspire, and that relates as well to American history as it's being considered in front of our very eyes. We are focusing on judging people in the past by today's ethics, even though ethics should not have a time limit. There should always be ethical consideration about people, no matter what the time, but that's not the way life is. And so Princeton University removed Woodrow Wilson's name from its public policy school, and Wilson was a racist, like many of his contemporaries. Uh, he led us through World War I. He was, uh, of course, uh, the president of the United States. He happened to also be a friend of the Jews who appointed Louis Brandeis as the first Jewish Supreme Court Justice. Racism at any time is not acceptable. But must we be obliged to forget the times in which these people lived, even though racism, as I said, at any time, it's unacceptable? Mount Rushmore, an American landmark. Some people say white Jefferson's face off of the landmark. Some people say get rid of the entire thing. Lincoln, Washington, Teddy Roosevelt, Jefferson, get rid of the entire monument. Because none of these people were perfect. Jefferson was an orator, a very good one, who penned the Declaration of Independence. Maybe he didn't live by every one of its principles, but he penned it. He was our third president. And he was seminal to found this republic. He was a slave owner, as were so many others in his day. Slavery is wrong at any time. But to what extent do we ignore the times in which he lived? Moses did remarkable things for our people, but he calls for vengeance in today's portion against the Midianites. And the rabbis were very distressed by it and tried to say, well, grammatically, he's talking about the present and the future, and they try to make it ethically acceptable because they were disturbed by it. Friends, we are believers in the history of ideas. Ideas move forward. They develop. They change over the course of generations most apparent in the history of ethics. What is taken for granted in one generation is unacceptable in the next. People think about Washington, also a slave owner, although he looked beyond it in his will, of course, when he no longer needed the slaves. We also have to remember that we probably wouldn't be here without Washington. And what he said to our people, but really to all Americans in Newport, Rhode Island in 1790, I, which he said that this nation should give to bigotry no sanction and to persecution no assistance. People are angry about Teddy Roosevelt, who had racist tendencies in a number of ways, but he also busted trust, championed conservation, and caused a scandal by inviting Boker T. Washington to dine with his family in the White House for his time beyond progressive, welcome, and distinguished black person when such was an anathema to too many in this country to our sadness. And so we must understand the shoes in which our black, brown, and for that matter, red fellow human beings have walked and often continue to walk and act to erase that stain 
on the American soul. But we also, I believe, have to acknowledge so much greatness at the core of those who created and strengthened this union, these United States. Of course, there are glaring imperfections in the American past and in the present. As there were in the biblical lives, our most vaunted personages represented. But by viewing them, these failings, we can correct and enrich both the present and the future. Yes, the Confederate flag and all those who fought to preserve slavery and destroy this union, these very United States. We will not miss those symbols and their protagonists. History books and museums can give them the historical context that they require. And I conclude, just this week, and you've seen this too, Deshaun Jackson, the 33-year-old Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver, posted a vicious anti-Semitic rant on his site. Speaking of Jews as controlling America and Lord knows what else in conspiratorial and wicked ways, claimed it was a Hitler poet, it wasn't, but it was very old. Julian Edelman, the patriot, who in recent years identifies strongly as Jewish, visited Israel and is proud of that heritage, embracing it, responded, not by trying to get Jackson fired and eliminated from the NFL, but in this way. How about the two of us go to Washington, D.C.? I take you to the Holocaust Museum, and you take me to the Museum of African American History and Culture. Then we'll have a burger and a difficult, uncomfortable conversation and educate each other on the struggles of our people, both of whom have been interminably suffering from racism. And as a black NFL player added, you don't elevate yourself by stepping on the back of another people who happen to be the Jews who are our good friends. Friends, this country and the censure culture, which often seems intent on destroying and toppling anything with even a hint of racist imperfection, should perhaps heed Edelman and our own richly hued Jewish tradition in listening to each other, educating each other, and ultimately protecting each other as children of one God. Nothing and no one has ever been flawless. We must listen, learn, and act. We can and must and will do better and seek the best in each other and the imperfect but still inspiring figures of the past and the present. I think it was Brett Stevens who wrote that those who sought to make the union more perfect should stand. Acknowledging the fallibility of our national heroes and the limitations of their time need not wipe out the good they also represented. Bringing down the best of these people because we now know who they might have been at their worst is not a good idea. And so I leave you with these difficult issues and at least the ability to think about these really important discussions 